useful. Let's join a bit early, ideally within the first five to 10 minutes. So it's much easier for everyone to start on time, right? Anyways, let's have a quick revision what we have done in the last class. The 19th of F class was already canceled. I informed in before. I saw there was some miscommunication that you have not been informed, but I already informed in the channel. But anyways, it was not reciprocate to you. And some of you have yet to join, so that is not good. I have informed the team accordingly. But anyways, the last class that we had discussed was 18th of February, right? And after that, we have on 25th of February. That last class, we have pretty much completed with the CSS and we started with the JavaScript. Today, we're going to continue with the JavaScript and ideology is to understand the basics of JavaScript, HTML, CSS versus JS, ECM is great, what JavaScript can do, inline, internal, external JavaScript, output, statement, function, syntax, etc., etc. right? And then the interview question, where versus let versus constant. But anyways, before moving, let's have a quick revision. So we started with properties of container, parents in a flex box. We were discussing the CSS flex and we were discussing the properties, right? What does CSS Flexbox is used for? CSS Flexbox is used to make responsive websites. What do you mean by responsive websites? As you can change the screen sizes, how does your application performs or website performs? So we have two things we call parents, which we call as container and we call child, right? Or flex items in general. So Flexbox make it very easy to make responsive websites using container item model. Container is parent, item is child. Now, we are talking about first parent property, which is properties of container parent in a flex box. Setting display flex makes the flex container flexible. Properties are, five properties are there. Let's go one by one. One is flex direction. It defines which direction the flex wants the flex items. So if I want to maintain it in a horizontal direction or vertical direction, accordingly, I can decide. My flex direction is reverse. By default, it is a row. I can make it row reverse also. So for one, two, three, four, I can convert into four, two, three, one also. Parallelly, let me open the HTML page that we have been working on. That is much easier to check by that. And there we are in the mon batch, we have index 2.html, right? Let me open that. There you go. I'll share this screen as well, right? This is the Flexbox model we were talking about. So this property, I will just share my complete screen and I'll keep it to the side. Yeah, now it makes much easy. Okay, now you can see everything parallelly. To end of it here, there you go. Here we are. First, we talked about flex container. So in that flex container, what I do, the very first property I talked about flex direction. Flex direction, I make it row reverse. By default, what will I have is, I will have one, two, three, four. This is the by default. The moment I say flex direction, row reverse, it become one, two, three, four in a reverse direction, right? Then. We moved about flex wrap. What do you mean by flex wrap? Means specify whether the flex item should be wrapped or not. So the moment I say flex wrap property, all of these eight items would be wrapped. So even if I make it like this, I'm able to see that they are able to wrap properly. Otherwise they are not. So if you see at the flex flow, you cannot see it is not responsive, but in the flex wrap, they are responsive. Okay, like this. Then what? This was the code part. And next we move for flex flow property. Flex property, it's a shorthand for both flex direction and flex wrap. The moment you want to do both of them together, you can keep it row as well as wrap. So left to right for row and wrapping for wrap. Justify content property is used to align the flex item. How do you want to justify? I want to connect in center, so I can use one to this one in center also. Then align items, align items property is used to align the flex items, right? The way I want to align the items. Then I have properties of items, children's in a flex box. So I'll come to children property. What do you mean by children property? Direct child elements of flex container, it becomes flexible. Now, flexible means responsive. That's what, whenever we use the term flexible, we means responsive. First is my order property. Order property means if I have one, two, three, four, and I want output as four, three, two, one. How do I determine the order? That order determination is provided by the order property. So for example, one, two, three, four, I have designed this and I want that kind of order. I can get this by order property. Second, Second is my flex box property. What is flex grow property? Grow property means how much a flex item will grow relative to the rest of the item. So let me make it like this and you'll be able to see, right? So if I want to make a one property to be bigger than other properties, I can accordingly determine the size. For example, if I want to give a higher property size to one of the attributes, I can determine that attribute property, okay? So this five will become five size the other items. So one, two, three, three will become five size of other items. What next? Flex shrink property, how much flex item will shrink? Just like the opposite of flex grow is flex shrink. 
and flex basis property. What do you mean by flex basis property means initial length of a flex item. Then finally, flex property is just for flex growth, flex shrink, flex basis, and align cell property designed for a selected item inside the container. Okay. Then we move for CSS flex response. What do you mean by flex responsive? If the responsive is more than 800 pixel, your web page's adjustable view will be with all screen. That is called responsiveness, right? So my current is one, two, three, but I want in my laptop, I want to change it to one, two, three. So this is a horizontal view. If I'm seeing it on a laptop or on a bigger size, on a smaller size, I want it to be dropped in a vertical one. So for example, this case, the navigation bar that we have drawn through. Yeah. And as we decrease the size, I'm still able to see my navigation bar, right? As you can see this media property. So this one, two, three, four, this is vertical, but the moment I do this media query, it becomes one, two, three, four vertically. The solution was using media query. That's what we are discussing on the screen right now. Let's see how do you make the code. To make it more responsive, you just define. Let's say for a particular width, I want certain size. And obviously you can create segments also. For example, between 800 to 1200, I want to show in a certain way, 1200 to 1800 in a certain way, 1800 to 2400 pixel in a certain way, and within zero to 800 pixel in a certain way. That's how you can determine the flex container. So observe this property, one, two, three, four. It is still horizontal, still horizontal, still horizontal. Now I start reducing the size. Just keep observing this moment. Exact this moment, this is horizontal. Last property I'm mentioning. Let me annotate over also. This property I'm mentioning on the screen. Okay. Just keep on observing. This remains horizontal until so far. The moment I reach here, this size, which is 800 pixel, it becomes vertical. Why? Because I've defined the maximum width as 800 pixel. Then you move to the interview question. Let me increase that screen. Let me clear this and come back here. Okay. Then you move to this screen is that a very popular interview question is outer square of n cross n block and n cross of half of the size n cross n by two cross n by two cross in the middle of the page. How will you decide that? A lot of people use it by normal HTML, CSS or other ways, which is not good. The most optimized answer is using a flex. So outer property I can take as a container, inner property I can use it as an item. So this is parent, this is child. So justify content center for the parent and align item center for the, and that's it. I will be able to do it in just two lines of code. Then we finally start with intro to JavaScript and that is what we are going to continue with. First of all, what is JavaScript and why do we go for JavaScript? Let's cover that. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, these three are the core components of any web page. Repeating, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, these are the core components of any web page. What is the purpose of them? HTML is a markup language which determines the content of the web page. What exactly you want to show on the web page. CSS is just a style element which defines the layout of the web page. What needs to be shown? Determined by HTML. How needs to be shown? Determined by CSS. What happens when you change something or apply something that determines by JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language. It means there's a programming logic defined on the top of it. So whenever there's a behavior change that is determined by JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is usually called ES. What do you mean by ES? ES is ECMS script. So ECMS script is a standard which determines the interoperability of web pages across different web browsers. Every web browser has to support JavaScript to render a web page, right? Yeah, if it's the if the website itself is not using any JavaScript, then it is fine. But every browser has to support JavaScript. So ECMA 262, that was a document which is internationally adopted, and that's why it is called ECMA script or JavaScript ES. Even in some of the node modules, you will find node ES written there. Okay. Now, versions we talked about ES1, ES2, ES3, which have been in 1999. ES5 was very recent, and ES6 is what we are currently using, which is most commonly used. ES6 as of now, which was in 2015. Now, what can JavaScript do? That is what we have to start with today's class. So I'll just come up to here and we'll start with today's class. Prior to that, any doubt in today's class, any doubt in previous classes, let me know. If not, we can start with today's class. Come on, guys, be quick. Any doubt, please ask. If it is clear, type clear. All good? Okay. Cool, let's start with today's class. First thing, my question is what can JavaScript do? So let's start with this. Since you're using a programming language, so to run JavaScript, do I actually need to store something or install anything? Answer is in your browser, no. In a browser, there is no need 
to install one moment no need to install javascript or any javascript compiler for example in if you're running a java code right for java code to run you need to install jvm and java compiler right both you need to have jvm and java jvm so if you're not having jvm jerry you cannot run the java code but in case of a javascript browser by default supported so if a browser by default supported no no installation of javascript is required no installation of compiler is required okay you can directly run in browser first thing first just one question which is better to use a raw css or a css better to use tailwind nowadays tailwind is becoming very popular to be very honest it determines on what use case you are having right if you're having too many animations, go for a Tailwind. SCSS is usually faster than our normal row CSS, no doubt. But Tailwind CSS, it's own use cases where your application is very, very animation heavy. In that case, go with Tailwind CSS. Okay. Now, in a browser, I don't need to install any JavaScript language as such or compiler as such. I can directly render it in the browser. Also, JavaScript is not compile time. It is interpreted, just to be clear. So let me open my browser and I can show you how you can run JavaScript in your browser. I just open google.com. Let's just start with this. I come here. I do a right click. I go to inspect. The moment you go to inspect, something like this will open up, no matter what browser you are using, Chrome or Mozilla or anything like that, right? Just to clear console. We're good to go. Let's get our console here and yeah. On this console, I'm just going to type something, right? Let A equal to 10, for example, and increase the size. Or if you can see my Google Chrome screen, right? Or if you can see, okay, cool. Let A equal to 10, and what I'm going to do is console.log. I give its value, is log is not defined. That was console dot. Okay, I got the value as 10. Similarly, I can define the value as equal to Devang, both double scripts, double quotes and single quotes are supported. And again, I run the command console.log. Okay, if I can see the alpha value is Devang. So you can see I'm not installing anything. I don't have to install any particular language or I don't want to install any particular compiler just to run my JavaScript. I can run my JavaScript in the browser itself. You can use this much as compiler, write a JavaScript code, run it here, it will work totally fine. Obviously the syntax needs to be corrected and you can clear the history whenever you want. Okay, that was part number one. In a browser, I don't need, let me increase the size. In a browser, I don't need to install JavaScript or JavaScript compiler. Second, what actually can JavaScript do? I want to know the power of JavaScript. Very important and most important is it can change the HTML content. What do you mean by HTML content? Let's see about that. Okay, quick question. Is it possible that CSS can change your HTML content? My question is, can CSS change your HTML content? Yes or no? Just answer yes or no. It's totally fine. Okay. Anyone else? Can CSS change your HTML content? Okay. Few yes and few no. Let's see the answer. Before you go here, CSS, let's start with CSS box model, the basic box model that we have discussed. What does the box model tells you? Box model tells you in CSS, you have four different components, right? You have margin, the most outer layer, then you have border, then you have padding, then you have the inside content, which is the actual HTML. Now, remember the classes of CSS. In CSS, we define the property margin 10 pixel or whatever, like border 10 pixel, padding 10 pixel. Let's copy this. Let's paste paste. Let's make it one for border. Let's make it one for padding. Okay. Something like this property we have seen and we have bugged on. Have you seen me writing code or anyone writing code like this? Content 10 pixel? No. 
understand this what css does is how your html content looks like you can adjust the colors you can adjust the font you can adjust the way it appears and everything but the content it cannot change what do i mean by content content is this if i'm saying let's start with h1 devang and close the h1 tag you can tell me how devang will be represented you can define the size you can define the color you can make it italic you can make it fonts underline all of this is fine but can you change this devang to something else in css that is what i mean by content that you cannot do by css of course flexibility is there like you can determine how it will look on different sizes that is all fine but you cannot change the content you can just change the way it looks like is that part clear to all css can just change the way your content looks like it cannot change the internal content which is present in your website right so css cannot change the html element but we can hide the content right with meta query it's not actually hiding the element it's just resizing it to different screen sizes that is not hiding element precisely okay and what else hiding is not considered as part of changing that is totally something else you can use by transparency and opacity also but that will not be counted as changing the content this can change the html element but it can change font color etc et these properties css can change but javascript at its core can change the html content whatever html content you have inside it can change the html content and change the inner content of html how does it do let's see for that we are going to see a code in order to see a code then we'll see how javascript is able to do so i'm going to open that file now let's do one thing let's create a separate file here so it's easier to check our javascript code right yeah many properties are there i'm just thinking should we come let's do one thing let's not keep it in the same so our html code remains in one file our css code remains in one file and our javascript code will be in one file so i'm going to create another file i'm going to save it as index 3.html okay now let's write the code from the sketch how javascript can change it right obviously i have to mention it's going to be a doc type html define the html what next close the html define a simple body and what next i want to show that javascript can change inner content of html this is what i want to show how do we show it let's see i have a simple let's say i want to give an id equal to let's say demo and i want to give javascript changing html something like this close the p tag now look at this code i'll explain this code in detail just i run this button type i keep as just button what next i click on click equal to document dot get element my id what id i want to give i want to give this demo and that's it dot inner html i will change this property to something else for example what do i have given here a javascript and i will close it here click button I'll close the button. Okay. I'll explain this code one by one. Let's move on to next. Document.get element by ID, double quotes, and here. 
let's keep it a single quote let's keep this one a single quote as well this goes here okay now this code looks good let me just render it and you'll see the output index 3.html here i open it click yeah it's able to work properly let me increase this a bit let me refresh this and just observe this here what do i have i have javascript changing html as the content i am going to press something on this click button i go to inspect i will minimize this size i want to see what happens when i press inside right there you go i'm going to click on this link and just observe this content okay now i'm going to click on this link the moment I click this, it is changing it to what? It is changing into hey JavaScript. Means my HTML content itself got changed just by pressing that click. That is what JavaScript can do. That was our code part. Now let's try to understand this code. Yes, it is able to change the HTML code, but how it is able to change HTML code? Let's try to understand that. So I'm going to take just these two pieces of code. This much is sufficient. There you go there you go okay let's understand one by one how it is working how it works okay let's see one by one the very if you remember in programming we used to do something like integer a equal to 10 and a equal to 20. what will the value of a if i print now What is the value of a if I print now? 20, right? It's a variable basically, right? Same thing is happening here. Two parts of the steps are there. Part number one and part number two. Document dot get element by ID dot inner HTML. So let's go one by one. Let's start with this. Let's remove this. Document dot get element by ID. What does it mean? Everything is a document. When we talked about the DOM model, we talked about what is the root, what are going to be the components and in the individual level. Get element by ID. Which element has the ID? This P element is the ID, which is JavaScript changing HTML. This part clear to all? When I say doc get get element by ID, which document has the element of ID? This P tag is the element of ID. So what, is it, what will this return? This will return me the P tag containing HTML. Is this part clear to all? Yes or no? Is this part clear to all? Okay, part number one. Part number two, when you say this document dot get element by ID dot inner HTML, what is the inner HTML here? This is HTML inside the P tag which is nothing, which is this. That's it. Okay. This is this JavaScript changing HTML. And then when you say, hey, JavaScript, what does this mean? I'll just put it here. The moment you say it to hey, JavaScript, this gets converted into this. This is just like setting A equal to 20. This is what I will refer. Okay. Repeating it again, three parts of the code. First part is when you say document dot get element, what does it mean? Which element has the ID demo? This P tag has the element as demo. So this complete P element or the P tag will be returned as answer. When you say dot in the HTML over that P tag, you are referring about the HTML code, which is inside that P tag. Obviously it can be reference also, it can be href also, it can be anchor tag or it can be something else as well, right? So when you talk about just HTML, that's why you type dot in the HTML, which is JavaScript changing HTML. And when you decide dot in the HTML equal to hey JavaScript means you have changed that JavaScript or you have changed that HTML to something else, which is hey JavaScript. So when you type this button on click means once you click that button, whatever that text is, it will change into hey JavaScript. That is what is happening in your actual website. So if you look at this, I'll refresh this. The moment I'll click on this, it will convert into hey JavaScript. And that is the expected behavior as well. 
this part clear to all all good okay that is part number 1 so javascript can change the inner html second what else javascript can do javascript okay one of the column is not complete let's see which one it is i did it this here okay number three is not only javascript can change the inner html javascript can also change the attribute of the html what do you mean by attribute we have discussed in html tags as well as attributes i'm just going to take it here javascript can also change the attribute what do you mean by attribute? If you remember, we discuss about attribute. IMG SRC equal to something. And A href equal to something. Which one is element here and which one is attribute here? Quickly. Which one is element here? Which one is attribute here? Correct. Element here is img tag or a tag these are our stm these are our element whatever attributes attributes are src and hlm just revising it now what do you mean by attributes in terms of an attribute it is given always as just quickly revising it always in the form of name and a value okay name and a value and it's always in starting tag attribute is never given it any tag it's always given in starting tag two things to add here now, what happens in an attribute and how I can change the attribute value? Element value we have already been changed, right? That's what we have seen in the previous example. How can I change the attribute value using JavaScript? Let's see. I'm just going to make a simple. Now, P is what? This paragraph type, that is my element or tag, whatever you call it. And Devang is what? That is a content. If I have to access it, how will I access it? I will say p dot in a rest table. Okay. So for a p, my ID would be in a rest table. Now come for the example. If I have to modify the attribute of a HTML, right? How will I access the attribute of HTML? Let's see. Image ID equal to image. and source equal to let's say link one which one is your and i will close the image of course right now this id equal to image that is one attribute this source equal to link one that is another attribute image itself is an element Now moving on to next. The moment I say document dot get element by ID image. What would be the output of this? Come on, guys, be quick document dot get element by id image what should be the output of this okay let me change something else let me change something I'm getting confused now tell me the output oh yes now tell me the output Correct. Photo is not the right answer, guys. That's why I updated it. Okay. Understand what you're doing. You are saying document dot get element by the ID, which ID has image. This ID has image. The element is IMG. Output will be IMG tag. Is this part clear to all? Tag or element, whatever you want to call, keeping it both as also. 
this code returns just the HTML tag. That's it, which is image tag. If I do this dot inner HTML, now what it will return? It will return the inner HTML, which is present here, which is photo. Now your output will become photo. This part clear? We have done it in the previous example. Now my question is, if I want to modify, let's say link one, I want to change one source image. Basically, I want to change the image. So if I want to change the image from link one to link two, how should I able to access it? In order to access it, you will just type dot image dot source. That's it. The moment you mention document dot get element bug image means image tag dot source, it takes you to the source property or basically the source attribute. This gives you link one as the output. This part clear? This gives you the links one of the output or basically SRC attribute of image tag. All good with this? Any doubt, let me know. All clear, type clear. Okay. And then if I have to change it, how will I change it? Copy this, paste it. I'll put a equal to, I'll change it to a link to. And this is where HTML attribute is changed by whom? JavaScript. JavaScript is able to change your HTML attributes also. So it can change your inner HTML also. It can change your attribute level also. And that is what I was referring to as third use case. Easy? Easy? Okay. Now we move to fourth part. On HTML side, we have seen it can modify its content, it can modify its attribute properties, and that's it. If you are able to modify the content as well as able to attribute modified properties, you can pretty much modify entire HTML. That's it about HTML. You can have just content and you can have the attribute properties. Both can be changed by JavaScript. So you can say in a nutshell, JavaScript can change your HTML. That's it. Now the question comes about, can JavaScript also change my CSS, right? Let's try to answer that. The answer is yes, JavaScript can also change CSS. How will that look like? Let's see. I can take the same example that I've used here. I'll put this code and keep it here. If I have to modify some of the CSS property, I can just use document or in fact, I can use it right here. This document dot get element by ID demo. This size, if I want to change, I can change like dot style dot font size equal to a hundred pixel, for example. Okay, I'll take this code. I'll just put it back and I'll show you in the demo. Put it here. Put it here. Save it here. Minimize this. Refresh this. Click on this and see the change. Okay. This is what I was referring to. Content is same. Make no mistake. This time the content is same. I'm refreshing it again. I click. Just the size becomes big. So the size, the font, the properties, the color, these are part of CSS. That is not the part of HTML. JavaScript can change your CSS part also. That is what I was referring. Okay. I'll put this back the way it was, and I'll put this also. So either case it becomes, either case it reminds you of both the scenarios. Okay, like this. Anyways, coming back to this, the property we're discussing is my JavaScript is sufficient or JavaScript is able to change the CSS property as well. This code understanding, I don't think it requires that much knowledge, but again, I'm revising it. Document would get element bash T. I'll just take this up here. Understanding of the code. First, when you talk about dot demo, technically you're talking about the P tag, right? This is your P tag. And when you say dot style, so what happens in style? Okay. 
it means css properties css properties on what on p tag and last but not the least there you are talking about font property of style on p tag this is what this line means one by one first p tag then you access the css property then you access the font size any doubt in this let me know the code is pretty straightforward so nothing much to discuss here but if still there's any doubt please let me know easy cool now we move to next part which is fifth when JavaScript can change HTML, when JavaScript can change HTML content, it can change HTML attribute, it can change CSS also. What else? My JavaScript can also hide the argument. Well, I delete CSS, but since you can access CSS via JavaScript, so you can actually hide the element also. How can I do it? I'll just take this code. I'll move it here. Document.get element by ID. After that, dot style, dot display, I can set as none. The moment you set the style display as none, means the property will get display or the element will be hidden forever. So let's try out this and show the demo. Come here, duplicate this, style dot what? Style dot. display and keep and i'll make it okay and this i'll copy i'll keep it here for safety and i'll remove it from here okay now come back to your page refresh it this is it click it it becomes empty or uh, empty means it has become it is not there anymore repeating it again this line that you're seeing javascript changing html the moment i click the button it becomes empty why because you have given the property that on click my style display should become none so it becomes none the element pretty much disappears okay copying this let me first get it back This was the original one. And this is the small line we have added. Okay. So that is how you can hide an element. Ideally, you are hiding by CSS only. But since you are able to reference, remove this. Since you are able to reference your CSS via JavaScript, so you can do it by JavaScript as well. Okay. Now, what next we have? I'll take this portion of the code, third and first line. This is sufficient. There you go. Sixth one is it can also unhide the element. So if it can hide the element, it can unhide the element as well. How can I hide the element? Exactly same piece of code. Copy this, paste it here. What do we have is this we have designed style dot display equal to none. This thing is style dot display equal to block. That's it. Okay, and that is how you can change the style. Whatever the style was, now it will be able to show whatever the actual style is. You want to pro produce some property by default. You can keep it empty. Style equal to display none you can keep it like this and then you can keep it block if you keep like this what will happen is by default you won't see anything but the moment you click on it you will see something right let me show you in demo these two lines move it here refresh it refresh it refresh it you see nothing is here the moment i click this this appears 
walk it again nothing is here no content is present here the moment i click this this appears here this is something which you used in your pop-up site or something in your coupon cards or cash rewards that is the kind of application you can use obviously you can build by simple css also but it's much easier to do that by using javascript so use case it is shown in your pop-ups it is shown in your coupon scratches or your cash rewards okay that is where such cases are useful what next we have can we use for loop and produce a list for n items within javascript yeah, yeah you can you can javascript is a programming language so you can write every logic that you have that you have done in c plus plus and java you can do it in javascript with some limitations but you can do it okay now what next hiding element and adding element that is what we have done and these are the use cases of javascript so first thing you've understood what is javascript what is the purpose of javascript now what can javascript do that is what we have seen it can change the content it can change the attribute it can change the css all three properties we have discussed repeating it again how powerful is javascript first i don't need to actually store anything i don't need to actually install or java compiler or javascript as a language my javascript compiler javascript as a language is already by default given in the browser part number one part number two it can change the html content that's what we have seen how does that code work that's also we have seen right first it will give me the p tag dot in the html will give me the html content and what you want to replace with it will replace with third javascript can so how do you change by that after getting that element from that element you decide which attribute and from that attribute decide which value so it is able to adjust for both and last but not the least, it can change the CSS property also. So what style you want, style is just one example, any CSS property you want, font size or anything that you can address by style dot that property name. It is used for hiding the element and unhiding the element. Both of them can be done in JavaScript. That's how powerful JavaScript is. Your HTML content, your HTML attribute, your CSS, hiding, unhiding, everything is handled by JavaScript. Now, next question comes, where do I include JavaScript in my code? Just like we have CSS, we have three different types of CSS, right? I can use it inline CSS, I can use internal CSS, or I can use external CSS. Where exactly should I put my JavaScript? Should I put it inline? Should I put it internal? Should I put external? Let's see. Where to include JavaScript in my web page code? Okay, let's try to understand that. So just like we have three different types of CSS, we have three different types of JavaScript as well. The first one is inline JavaScript. What does inline JavaScript does? Let me give an example. Button type or let's take this one. This is inline JavaScript. What do you mean by that? I'm using JavaScript I'm using JavaScript as the event attribute. Let me write it, then I'll explain. Use JavaScript as with HTML code as event attribute. What do you mean by this term event attribute? Let's try to understand. See, what I'm telling you, button type button, all of this is a HTML code. This is not JavaScript code. Only this portion is JavaScript code on click equal to something. And if I move to the right side, click and button, that is also HTML code. So all HTML here, all HTML here, only this portion is the JavaScript code. That's it, nothing else. If you observe carefully, you are calling a JavaScript only when the button is clicked. If the button is not clicked, that JavaScript is never rendered. All agree? All agree? If a button is click, only then you are calling the JavaScript code. If that JavaScript, if that button is not click, there a JavaScript code is not invoked. All agree? Okay. That is what you call as event attribute. In the case of an event, either of a click of a button or a refresh or something else, only in the case of an event, your JavaScript is being called. That is what you call as event attribute. Everybody clear with this? Let me know. Any doubt, please ask. Everybody clear with this? Let me know. Any doubt, please ask. 
inside your HTML code, you're providing the JavaScript code as an event attribute. This is called inline JavaScript, right? So whenever in your HTML code, inside your HTML code, you're giving the JavaScript code that is called inline JavaScript. With an event attribute means if something happens by clicking it, any kind of event, it can be click, it can be a notification, it can be a pop-up, it can be refresh, any event JavaScript is being rendered there. Okay, part number one. Part number two is internal JavaScript, which is very much similar to your internal CSS. Okay. What do you mean by that? You can simply create a script. You can write the JavaScript code, finish it by a script, and it will be rendered as a JavaScript code inside your HTML. That's it. So internal JavaScript, very similar to internal CSS. What happens is you have a script inside that script. Between the script tag, you can get the JavaScript code that will be rendered as a JavaScript code. Now, there are two ways to achieve this. What are the two ways? Let's talk about that also. First, it can be used in head. Second, it can be used in body. Let's keep body as well. Okay. What do you mean by can be used in head? So inside your head element, you can keep a script. Let's say this JavaScript code and close the script. Then you close the head. Okay. What do you mean by keeping it in the body? Means inside your body, you're going to and you're going to close the body tab. Now, a quick question: What do you think? Which one is faster, keeping JavaScript inside the head? or keeping JavaScript inside the body. Think about it, let me know. Which one is faster, keeping it inside the head or keeping it inside the body? And also give me the reason why, of course, right? Be quick. 10 seconds I'm giving to everyone. Think and let me know why keeping in a head or why keeping it in a body and which one is faster and why, okay? Okay, let me see what responses you have got. Head is faster, JavaScript executes line by line. Makes sense. Okay. Body is faster, it's close to element where it has to be applied. Okay. Head loads first, and also there's no such component to load, but in body, there can be a huge amount of elements that can be loaded. So there may be a delay to load. Okay. So what's the final answer? Head or body? The correct answer is although it's not a very substantial difference, but Placing script in body tag improves display speed. Okay. Why? Two things. First, HTML loads from top to bottom. Okay. It loads from top to bottom. So the first element you will have is the head element, then you will have the body element. At you want to load all the elements at the same runtime. You don't want that JavaScript is rendered first, HTML is not rendered first. So you don't want to just render in the head part and before even going to the content of the body part. That's why. So head first, then body. Second, JavaScript is interpreted language. What do you mean by interpreted language? It executes line by line. So best and quick rendered, best and quick rendered along with HTML code and hence keep it in body. This is the reason behind that. Again, I'm saying it's not a much substantial difference, but in normal scenario, Keeping it inside the body is much faster than, not much faster, it's relatively faster than keeping it in the head. Two reasons contribute to that. First, the way HTML loads from top to bottom. So first, whatever in the head, that will be loaded. Then whatever in the body, then it will be loaded. 
Since JavaScript is interpreted, it will be executed line by line. You want to load it along with your HTML code. So it is best to keep it in the body part rather than keeping it in the hack part. This part is clear. This part is clear. Okay. That's a very dicey interview question. That is why it is a question to keep on, but not many people do it. Many people just generally say had one. So that's why I wanted to ask this question. Now, another type of JavaScript is external JavaScript. Just like you have external CSS file, you can have external JavaScript files. It means I can create a file. I can write JavaScript code in it. And save as file.js. Okay, I can create a file, I can write JavaScript code and I can save as file.js file. Example, script SRC equal to file.js and that's it, this ends your script. There's a code part. I can create a simple script. I can create an external JavaScript file and I can render that JavaScript file into my external CSS. Okay. Everybody clear with all three types. These are the three types of JavaScript you have. First is inline JavaScript. You can have your JavaScript code along with your HTML code as an event attribute. Second, internal JavaScript. You can have it in two ways, one in the head, other in the body. Usually the body is much faster than in the head. Third is external JavaScript where you can keep it in a separate JavaScript file and you can render it. Now, the question come just like we had the previous discussion also, which one is better? Inline JavaScript, internal JavaScript, or external JavaScript, what do you think, which one is better and why? Obviously, just like in the, in, just like in the CSS we discussed, which one is fastest? Definitely the fastest is inline one. But the question was, which one is better? That is subjective. Which one is fastest? Inline one is going to be the fastest as compared to internal or external, but if you're dealing with a very large code, that case external is better. Okay. Fastest in line, depending upon the size of the code base, maybe it can external is better, right? So ideally, in a very good, very good application where you have very, very different elements, you will prefer to keep a separate HTML and JavaScript code. Okay. It's much easier to read and maintain as well for large applications. If you have a very small application, one page only, in that case, you can keep it in just one page, right? So you can use inline JavaScript in that case. Cool, guys. This part clear to all? This part clear to all? Okay. Now let's move to next, which is JavaScript output. What are the different ways you can do the JavaScript output? Let's have a look. There are many different ways you can give output via JavaScript or you can print via JavaScript. Let's go one by one. First, you have already seen that is using inner HTML. Okay. So I'll code parallelly so you guys can see. These three we have kept for. Let me check status now. This is good. Anyways, let me show you what is the current status of the website. If you go with this code, for example, this one, I've created three different buttons. On click of one button, I should be able to change it. On click of another button, I should be able to change the size. On click of third button, I should be able to change the complete display element, right? My website looks like this at this moment. This content, I have three buttons, right? Now in these three buttons, if I click on first button, it changes the content. Second button, it increases the size. Third button, it displays completely. So on and so forth, okay? Which is good, which will not impact with what we are going to write code right now. First thing I want to show is how we can access via inner HTML. You have pretty much seen how we can access via inner... Let's see that example.
different methods to print or output in JavaScript. Okay. I'm going to use a P element with the ID equal to print. I can just say that printing I can simply use JavaScript if I want to use an internal JavaScript I can say script and the script here inside that script I just want to give a property document dot get element by id or let's take this property paste it what else i want to do i want to replace by this okay i refresh this what do i get i get devang and i get pricing let me click this refresh this Let's keep it inside the head. There you go. Why it is rendered here? Let me refresh this. PID, oh, my bad. I'm using the ID as a demo. It should be ID as print. That's what I was thinking. Okay, now it is good. Okay, cool. So the first method is method number one. Method number one is that I'm able to keep it via simple stream. So I'm going to write method one via in a I refresh it, I change it. You can see the method one is by inner HTML. This is one way you can print the output in JavaScript. So I'm going to take this code and give it as an example. Other screen is not visible, only dot code file is visible. I shared it, right? I thought I'm sharing the screen. Okay, let me share the complete screen if that helps. This is here, this is here, and I move this. Okay, on the right side, there should be code. I'll stop it here. On the right side, there should be code. On the left side, there should be output. Okay, now the changes that I've done is, is this part. In this case, I've just changed. Different methods I want to see in which I can print the out JavaScript output. The first method is that I've used is document or get element by ID. So if I refresh it, you can see, I'll further minimize this. Yeah. If I refresh this, you will see I have three links because I've created three different links. One will be just changing it. Second will be increasing it. And third is just removing it that we have seen already previously. This is what I'm showing by inner HTML. So I'm able to change it by inner HTML code. This code I'll take, I'll put this chat window separate. I'll share only the screen, make it large and zoom. Okay, now it should be better. Coming back, first case using inner HTML, that is how you're able to modify it. In your script code, you define what you want to change. It can be empty, it cannot be empty. You define how you want to print in your JavaScript. Accordingly, you can change it. Okay. Part number two is using document.write. You can print the JavaScript output in document.write. Usually, it's pretty much similar to similar to system.out.println. in JavaScript, sorry, in Java. It's very much similar to system.out.println in Java. This is highly used for testing purposes. 
just like you use console.log and all, it is just used in the same way, testing purposes. So let's write it and let's see the example. If I just use document dot write show. I refresh this. And not just this, I can do multiple other things like this is method two document dot right. Observe this. I'm going to go back to the web page. There you go in the web page. I refresh it. Method two, I can see document dot right. Same method which I'm able to see. Whatever I'm printing there, first method is via inner HTML, second method is via document dot right. So this code is able to print it via document dot right. And not just that, I can use pretty much anything. Let's say I put a equal to 20, a variable, and I say document dot right. A plus 10. What will be the output of this? Anybody? What will be the output of this? Line number 25, line number 26. Okay. Let's see. Come on, guys, anybody else? The output would be 30, not 20 times. Understand this. And I usually ask this question before I cover this a bit later in the code. Output will, why, why it will be 20 times? 20 times will be in the case when it is parsing as a string. If you have given A as a number, it will not consider it as a string. If you give it as a string, by default, it will consider it as a string, right? So what will happen here is, there you go. This is 20, which is a number. This is 10, which is again a number. So 20 plus 10 is just 30. Output will be 30, not 20 times. However, if you give like this, then it will give you 20 times, okay? Or if you give like this, or if you give both, in that case, your output will be 20 times. But in this case, it's a simple code. It will give you A plus 10, which is 20. Plus 10, 30. Okay. Coming back here, I'm just going to change it. I'm just telling you that this is how also you can print it. Now, what else? I'm just going to take this code. This is the second one. What else? Is there any other way you can print the JavaScript output? Yes. There's one more way you can print the JavaScript output. That is window.alert. What is this window.alert and what is this use for? Window.alert is used to generate your notification, right? Or a pop-up as you can say. Just like a pop-up or notification, it is used like that. So that code, you can see quickly. Window dot alert. And let's say, I want to give alert of 10 plus 15. That's it. Now I'm going to go back to my screen, observe something. Okay, this is my current page. I'm going to refresh and I want you to observe something. Can you guys see the pop-up? I'm not sure if you can. I'll share the complete screen if you cannot. Can you guys see the pop-up? No, okay. I'll share the complete screen in that case. Now see it. I'm gonna refresh it again. Just see if you can see the pop-up now or not. this pop-up I'm mentioning about. Now all of you can see, right? It says this page says 25. So what is this, this page says 25? This is just a pop-up which has been generated or basically alert which has been generated from my HTML page. How? Using window.alert. Clearing this, moving this, this is here. This is what window.alert. I click OK, I go back, I refresh, I can see this alert. Okay. 
Inside that, you can see you are viewing a local or stack shared file. Okay. Going back to my sublime text, this is the code. I'm not going to keep it here because every time I refresh, it will show a pop-up, which I don't want. So just include a script, include a script. Like this. What next? Next, we have another method which is console.log, which is one of the most popular ones as well, right? Console.log will not print it on the document. A lot of people confuse between document.write and console.log. Understand one thing very clearly. When you say document.write, you are printing on the document, you're printing on the HTML page. That's what we follow the DOM model, right? You're printing on the document. When you say console.log, you're printing on the console. Console and document are different things. Your web page and console behind it are different things. Console is just like a terminal. So web page is web page. And when you right click, you see the console, which is used for logging purposes. It's totally different. Okay. I want to show that also. So I'm just going to add console.log. I'll come to it. Let where cons will discuss all of that in detail. But not right now. Console.log, I print, let's say 10 plus 15 again. Now observe this. I go back to my page. I have put console.log. And by the way, let me add some method three is what? Method three is window.alert. Okay. Now just observe something. Do this, do this, refresh it. Go back to the page. I refresh this page. Or is not generated in the next line. Anyways, let's try to modify it. This is S2. This is S2 here. Okay, this looks good. What next we have? Method three, method four, method five. Okay. This looks good. Removing this from here. Now let's go back to our web page. Refresh this, we have method one, method two, method three, method four. Anywhere in this page, do you see 25? Anywhere in this page, do you see 25? No, why? Okay, two things. First of all, there is not 25, but does that mean 25 is not printed? Console.log 10 plus 15, which is 25 is printed, right? But I don't see it on my web page, or basically I don't see it on my document, but that does not mean my web page is not contained. It. Exactly. Not in the developer console, it's just called console. So let's just refresh this, go to inspect. Can you see something in the console? 25. Can you see 25 here? Let me zoom if you cannot, right? I refresh it one more time, you will see again it will be because every time you are printing it, every time JavaScript is rendered, every time you will see 25. Okay. Or I can also do one thing. like this now refresh it i can see value 1015 what have i done i have sent value 1015 the moment i've kept it as a string now it will just taking as 10 plus 15 otherwise it was taking it as a number anyways refreshing it changing it coming back refresh every time you will change you can see the value 25 similarly you can print any element or any variable or any constant value you want to print, you can print it in your console log. Console.log, repeating it again, document.write means printing it on the document. Document means this website that you're seeing. That is what document is. Console.log is used to print it on the console level, not anywhere else. Okay. Now, last but not the least, let's talk about the fifth method also, which is used for printing. And let's write the code here also. Like this. Fifth method that we have is JavaScript print. 
JavaScript gives you the option to print a page, right? Just type you type control P, something similar to that. It's kind of to print a page. How do we do that? Let's see that also. I'm just going to create a button. Window.print. Print this page and close it with a button. And method five, I'm going to say that is window.print. Okay. Now let's see how this page looks like in the output. Come back here, refresh this. Method five is window.print and I have something print this page. If I click on print this page, what happens is it saves me as a PDF. Okay, or pretty much whatever the print you can see. If you're not able to see it, let me hit in a full screen. Now just observe carefully. I'm going to refresh it again. Just observe what I'm going to happen. I click on this print this page. Can you guys see a print pop-up? Can you guys see a print pop-up? Yes or no? You should be able to write. Can you guys see a print pop up? Okay, yeah, that's what I was saying. So, just like you do command P or control P, you can do it by JavaScript also. Whatever you do by shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, command P, control P, all of that you can do here also. Save as PDF, send as a fax, or print it, layout modes, everything. It's just giving you the printing options. That's it. Equivalent to your command P. Okay. Let's take this code as well. There you go. And these are the different ways where I can give an output either on my screen, either on my screen or in terms of my JavaScript content. Okay. How to prevent anybody from saving as PDF my web page, saving my PDF as web page or saving my web page as PDF. I think you meant to ask saving your web page as a PDF. In that case, you can right enable right click, right? Or disable right click basically. Disabling right click property is also used in common research papers or things like that, where you cannot just save as a PDF. You cannot save as PDF, you cannot even right click, you cannot even copy the content, right? So that is done by disabling the, disabling the page. Okay. That is also we are going to see in some time, anything. Cool guys, let's revising this JavaScript output, then we'll go for statements. First of all, what are the different ways I can give output from my JavaScript, either to the document or to the console? There are five different ways. First is using inner HTML, we have discussed. Second, using document.write, that is what also we have discussed. It prints on the document. Third, window.alert, it is used to create pop-up. Pop-up, okay. Fourth is console.long, which is used to print on the console level. It is not printing in the document, it is printing in the console. And fifth, last but not the least, is your JavaScript print, which is used to just offer window.print. That is used to print the page. Same as printing a page. These are the five different ways. What next? This part is done. There you go. Next part is JavaScript statements. What do we have in JavaScript statements? In order to understand this, you have to understand the way JavaScript works. Let me just take one minute and connect my charger. We'll continue with JavaScript statements. Just one minute, guys. Cool, guys. Continuing back, JavaScript statements. What does it mean? Let's try to understand that. Pretty much everything you are writing is a statement, right? Any piece of code, any line that you are writing, it's a statement in JavaScript. Now, how does it look like? First of all, everything is object in JavaScript. Nothing is integer, strong, string or something like that. Everything by default is an object. What do you mean by that? Any property you want to change, you can change it at the runtime. Okay. Now I'm going. And that is where I'll discuss this integer versus string part. Anyways, if I give let a equal to 10, at this moment, what do you think is the type of a? If I give a equal to 10, what do you think is the type of A? 
number okay just to quickly go to our google chrome open our inspect element come back here go to console let's let's start with the very basic java code i mean javascript code i put let a even if i don't give let by default it is given as let only Tab. okay and now what i do identifier has already been declared ignore it i want to print type of a what do i get i get the output as number easy a is just 10 it is not called integer decimal double or something in javascript we directly call it as a number so it is number you are able to see the output as number all clear so far easy okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say a equal to day one all easy now i apply type of a which is string what does it mean a was initialized as a number it was associated with the number value but now the moment i say a equal to devang now it says type of a as devang what does this mean come on guys quickly this means that there is no strict data type associated with any value right everything is an object everything is a container basically you want to give it a number value it can take container value you can give it to a decimal value you can take a decimal value it can want to give a string value it can give a string value everything is just an object basically a container i'll clear the console and i'll show you one more time okay so i started with here then i printed okay let me just clear this first I'll do a equal to 10. Okay. Type of a number. Then I put a equal to the one. Type of a string. This is the kind of message I want to show. If you observe carefully here, a can take number, a can take strings. Means nothing is strictly typed here. Nothing is strictly typed. That's why JavaScript is also called loosely typed languages. Interpret languages like Python and JavaScript, these are loosely typed. There's no fixed data type associated. Same I can do in Python also. In Python, if I give a equal to 10 and a equal to devang, it will work. It can accept as a string, it can accept as a number, decimal, whatever you want to give. By default, it's an object. There is no strict typing which is done. Strict typing means there is no data type associated. So it's all loosely typed. I can define the property and accordingly, it will be able to adjust it. This part clear to all? This part clear to all? Okay. If this is clear, now I'm going to take this. I'm going to go back to my sublime, paste the code here. This is what I'm getting. Okay. It is a loosely typed language, means no data type defined as such. No strict data types defined as such. Part two. That is what we have seen in the case of let. Let's see something in the case of where also. I'm going to clear this. I'm just going to create a variable. Let's say b comma c. Created. I initialize the value b equal to 5. I initialize c equal to a plus b which is devang at 5 and then i console dot log c which anyways it has done which is devang 5 right now that is how you can create variables also how you can create constant let's see that also i create a constant equal to 10 easy if i check the type of e what is it it should be a number. If I print E, what should I get? I should get 10. If I try to modify E, what will happen? If I do e equal to 20, what should be the output? One guys, be quick. If I do e equal to 20, what should be the output? Quickly.
करेक्ट असाइनमेंट टू कॉन्स्टेंट वेरिएबल दिस इज एरर दिस गिव मे एर दैट यू कैन नॉट चेंज इट वाई बिकॉज इट इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट दैट्स ऑल्सो अनदर थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू सी वी हैव डन वोट फॉर वेरिएबल लेट एंड कॉन्स्टेंट नाउ वी आर गुड टू डिस्कस विद द इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन आई वॉज मैंशनिंग दैट इज फॉर लेट दैट गोज फॉर यूर वेर बीक्वल टू फाइव आउटपुट दिस एंड दिस आउटपुट इज दिस This is fine. Type of this is number. This is fine. The moment you do this, this is going to generate you an error. Okay. All three we have done. You see in the code with the let, which is again used for creating variables. Where is also used for creating variables. What's the difference? I'll come that in a bit. You see in the case of a let, we have seen the case of a where, we have seen in the case of a const. Just one thing to mention it again. Let's keep it bit here. just one thing to mention again code with let this is code with const yeah just one thing i was saying to mention here is that no matter what type it is let var and const at the end everything is just an object a b c d e all of that you are seeing at the end it is just an object so whether you want to give it a integer whether you want to give it a string etc etc all of them are at the end of the day all of them are objects now let's start with very two important interview questions interview questions very important first I want you to give me the output of this. Let x equal to five plus two plus three. And let's see who will give the correct output. Do not run this; otherwise, no purpose of asking this, right? I want all of you to give honest answer without any, without running them, of course. One by one, guys. Let me finish it all. This one, two, three, four, five. Five test cases sufficient. I want the output of console dot log x in all cases. Okay. I want the output of all in all cases. This is your code. Again, I'm repeating. Do not cheat. It's not useful for any ways for you. Honestly, whatever you think is the answer, just answer in the comment. But whenever you're answering, please make sure that you answer logically. For example, one is this. Ah, uh, two is this, three is this, four is this, etc., etc. Or either the best way is that you can keep one comma second comma third comma fourth comma five. Give me the answer in this format. It's much easier for me to look. Everybody, just give one line answer. In that one line answer, it will be separated by commas, giving the answer for all five of them. I'm copying this code, giving you all in the chat. Please change your message directly to me. Repeating it again. Please change a message directly to me and then give me the answer. Okay, thirty seconds on clock. I want all of you to answer. Your time starts now. Please change message directly to me, then give me the answer. Please cross check your answer before giving the final response. Cool guys, I think I've given enough time. Let's discuss the answer what we have got, and we'll see who has got all the correct answers. So before that, let's take this. Put it here. Put it here. Put it here. Put it here. And here. Okay. Copy this. Go back to Chrome. Let's clear everything that we have. Paste it here. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's run one by one.
first case much easier everybody has got the correct output which is 10 next case Five twenty-three. Okay, some of all of you have got wrong. One of you have got incorrect. Somebody you have typed fifty-five. Okay, that is five twenty-three. Let's go for next. Five twenty-three. Okay, again, lot of you have wrong. Two people have been wrong so far. Rest of the people are correct. Those are written eighty-two. So one more candidate eliminated. Next. 73, 73, 73, 73. Again, three people have correct, two people have again correct. Last, 104. 84, 104, 104, 23, 73, 55. Okay. Surprisingly, only one of you has got all the correct answer. Rest, all of you have at least one incorrect. Okay. Only one of you is able to correct, give all the correct answers. Anyways, it's fine. It's totally fine. Let's understand the trick behind it. Those who know it, good. Those who don't know it, let's see the trick behind it. The simple trick behind this is, when a number is written in either single quotes or double quotes right either a number is written in the quotes or if there is a string slash string all numbers after it are treated as strings and concatenated that is the trick behind solving such questions okay Repeating it again, when a number is written in quotes slash there is a string, any number following that will be considered as a string and will be concatenated. That's why when you see 5 plus 2 plus 3, all of them are numbers, nothing to do. Output will be 10 here. 5, this number is written in quotes, means it becomes string. After that, everything will become string. So you'll get the output 5, 2, and 3 concatenation. Easy? Now, this 5, this is a number. This two itself, this becomes a string. So after number will become string as well. So five, two, and three. Next, five, two plus three. Five plus two will become seven and post that it is a three. So 73. And finally, five plus two plus three, that is 10. 10 plus four. This will give you 104. It is a string. Everybody clear with the trick? Everybody clear? Any doubt, please let me know. If this question comes in the interview, I don't want any of you to give incorrect answer now. Any doubt, please ask. If it is clear, type clear in the chat. Any doubts, please ask. If it is clear, type clear in the chat. Okay. If all clear, I'm just giving one last comment or one last quote. I want everyone to give correct answer for this one. 5 plus 2 plus 3 plus... I want all of you to give correct answer for this one. Come on, guys. No incorrect answer for this one. Okay. All of you are correct. 5 plus 2, 7. Movement 3 becomes a string. Rest of them will become string. 734. Okay. Cool, guys. This is what we have discussed in the first interview question usually asked in the interview part number one part number two is this interview question where versus let versus const it's a very important interview question what is the difference between them part one and part two is what is the concept of hoisting this concept itself is a very important and that is contained in the part of this interview question. Difference between where and let, how does hoisting works here? Both of them are very interview, important interview questions. That is, of course, we are going to discuss tomorrow because we are pretty much running out of time now. So if I start this topic, it won't be able to finish. So that will complete tomorrow. 
Let's quickly revise what I've done in today's class and then we'll go for next one. We are here for statements, which we are done. Well, the statement is work in progress and then we'll go for syntax and then functions. Cool guys, we completed with JavaScript. We started with our JavaScript. We completed with the CSS. We started with the JavaScript. First of all, what can JavaScript do in a browser? You don't need to install JavaScript or compile it directly run in the browser. Second, it can change the HTML content. So CSS cannot change the HTML content, but JavaScript can. How it can? This is the example that we have seen. How it works internally? That also I've explained to you. First, you do the get element by ID. It gives you the element. When you type dot in an HTML, it gives you the actual HTML content inside. And when you replace it, you can able to see the output here. Okay. Also, it can change the attribute of the HTML. How it can change the attribute of the HTML? Let's see that also. So dot in HTML gives you the HTML dot SRC or whatever attribute you're using that will give you the attribute. So you can change the attribute. It can also change the CSS. One moment. It can also change the CSS. How it can change in the CSS also? You can define dot style and based upon dot style, whatever CSS property you want to change. It can also use for hiding the element as well as unhiding the element. All five of them it can use. We talked about the use cases here. Next part, where do you include JavaScript in your web page code? You can use inline JavaScript, internal JavaScript, external JavaScript. Inline JavaScript, where you can use the JavaScript with the HTML code as an event attribute. So example, when I click on click, in that case, my HTML code will be attributed. Second is that in internal, I have two ways. I can give it in a head or I can give it in a body. The advantage is whenever, since HTML loads from top to bottom, so head is loaded first, then the body gets loaded. And JavaScript is an interpret language, so it's execute line by line. So placing script in the body will improve the display speed as compared with placing it in the head. Okay. Third is external JavaScript. You can create in a separate file. You can add the JavaScript code, save as file.js file. You can embed in your HTML. Okay. And which one is better? Obviously, fastest is inline, but if it's a very large code, it's recommended that you keep separate CSS, separate HTML, separate JavaScript. Easier to read and maintain. Finally, how JavaScript outputs are generated? First, using inner HTML. Second, document.write. Third, window.alert. Fourth, console.log. And fifth, JavaScript print. Okay. All of these use cases and live demos we have seen and have given the code as well. Last comes JavaScript statements. As I mentioned, everything is an object. JavaScript is a loosely typed language, so there is no strict data types defined. Same you can assign to a number, you can assign to a string, and you can change the number to string, vice versa. Okay, everything is an object at its code. We have seen the code with variable, we see the code with let, we have seen the code with const. What next? We have seen if we'll get the error whenever we try to modify from the constant. Interview question, two parts. First part we have discussed is when the number is written in quotes, what happens in that case? All of these cases we have discussed in the output. The trick for that question is whenever numbers written in quotes slash whenever a string appears, any number after that strings are considered as strings and concatenated respectively. We have seen the correct output for all of this. Second part of the interview question, difference between where versus let versus constant, very important. That also includes the concept of JavaScript hosting. That is what we are going to discuss in tomorrow's class. Okay.